Well, hey folks, how are you? Welcome back to another episode of In The Loop TV. I'm your host, Don Grant, CTC Cutting Tool Counselor, here with, I hope, another exciting episode. This one's a little bit different. I'm gonna explain it in a second here, but before we do that, you have to hit the like button. You have to hit the subscribe button. You see, normally I say subscribe and like. This time I mixed it up just to keep it a little bit different. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, share it with anybody that you think can gain from this knowledge as we bring as a cutting tool company. We're kind of launching two episodes in one. We just launched an episode called Chip Thinning. Please go back and watch it because this one's on chip breakers. And it's very important to watch the one on chip thinning before the ones on chip breakers because they absolutely have nothing to do with each other. I thought it was kind of good. Maybe an homage to Ponch and John chips. I don't know. Maybe we should do the theme song. Da, 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 da. No, I don't think so. Please watch this one. This one's on chip breakers or chip management systems or how do we break the chips? What are the benefits? What are we going to do to help that? Stick around. We're going to talk about it next. So Don, what are all these little serrations on the cutting edge of an end mill and what do they do and how do we use them better? Well, if you're asking me, they're called chip breakers or chip splitters. Some people call them chip management systems and they're there for a reason. Obviously, the name chip breakers kind of gives you a little hint of what they're used for, but come on, really? How do you use them? How do they help you? What's the pros? What's the cons? Give me the dirt, Don. Explain it. We need to understand how these work a little bit better so we can use them a little bit better in our application and understand when to use them. We can't talk about it here. We have to run to the shop and talk about it next. Well, okay, now we're at the shop. And before we get started, I just feel like I need to be 100% honest with everybody out there in YouTube land. And there's a secret that I've been holding that I just want to bring up. And this is the perfect place to do it right here. You do realize I'm really not at the shop, right? This is kind of in my basement at a green screen. Just wanted to share that. Want to start things out honesty. I wish I could be at the shop all the time, but you know what we do at the shop? We identify how to make chip breakers work efficiently. So what is a chip breaker? Let's just talk about what it is. You ever look at an end mill and you see all these little serrations on the side of an end mill? Those are called chip breakers. If you don't see those on an end mill, you get what? You get a continuous chip all the way down. It takes a lot of pressure, right? And it makes really big chips. What we do is we add something called chip breakers, which are these little serrations all the way down the cutting edge that break up the chips. It makes them smaller, kind of manage them, called chip splitters. We're gonna explain when to use those, how to use them. Do they work for finishing? Do they work for roughing? What are the benefits? What are the pros? What are the cons? We're gonna talk about that. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how to use chip breakers. So before we get started and we talk about chip breakers and stuff like that, I just want everybody to understand that there's two types of end mills that look like chip breakers. One is actually a knuckle rougher or fine tooth rougher, not the same as chip breakers does something totally different. We have a great uh, blog on In The Loop. You can read the difference of that. I'm not gonna dive into it because I really just wanna talk about chip breakers or chip splitters on this episode and what the pros and cons are. Just understand, look at, look at the picture, right? Those are two totally different ways to use an end mill. Don't mistake a knuckle rougher, a fine tooth rougher with chip breakers. Chip breakers are totally different and that's what we're gonna explain. So when you have an end mill and you see those serrations on it, when an end mill makes a chip and it doesn't have any splitters, it has a cutting edge. That cutting edge has so many flutes and runs all the way up the length of cut, LOC, it's called the length of cut. When it forms a chip, that whole cutting edge is engaged in the material and making a chip. Those chips, depending on your material, can be long, can be stringy, they put some force on the end mill, okay, and they cause a lot of swarf and a lot of material in there. What we do 
is when we are trying to break that up and make a smaller chip or manage the chip a little bit better, what we can do is add something called chip breakers. Now, what are some of the pros to adding chip breakers? What would you say are a huge positive? Let's talk about this. First of all, they're serrations. They're taking the cutting edge that's hitting the whole material, okay? It's putting a lot of force on it. So if we add chip breakers, and we break up the chips and make them smaller, what are we doing? We're minimizing force. Let's think about that first. We're minimizing the force on the end mill. So we're dropping the horsepower and the spindle load. So first pro is think about this as if you're lacking the horsepower, maybe you're doing an HEM long cut and you wanna be able to play with the big boys, as far as the machine tool goes, I'm talking horsepower and power, you might want to add chip splitters or chip breakers to reduce some of that horsepower. Now, is it substantial? Is it huge? No, it's not. But it will reduce the horsepower, the spindle load on that machine, draw a little bit uh, less, and make it a little bit more manageable. So add chip splitters, chip breakers, when your horsepower might be a little bit of an issue. Now, the biggest thing I say with chip splitters and way to add chip splitters Please look at adding chip splitters if chips are a problem. What do I mean by that? Well, if we're having a problem evacuating the chips, the chips are piling up, you can't get them through your chip conveyor, please add chip breakers, add chip splitters. And the reason for this is, is you're gonna make a smaller manageable chip. It's gonna get through the chip conveyor. It's gonna evacuate a lot easier. It's gonna be flushed away with the coolant, whether you're using flood or whether you're using high pressure, a smaller chip is more manageable. Now, the con of that, this is why I say, only add chip breakers if chips are a problem. Because what's the weakest part of an end mill? It's the corner, right? It's the corner of the end mill. So when we add chip breakers and chip splitters, what are we doing? We're adding a bunch of corners. So the reason I say only add chip breakers if chips are a problem, because you are adding a lot of corners and those corners can fatigue. You get one of those that break down, it gets through the code and you're gonna have some issues. Also understand when you're using a chip breaker or a chip splitter end mill, it's for roughing. I don't care what anybody tells you. It'll give you a decent finish because they are offset. Let me just preface it, the fact that I just said it's a rougher, that the chip breakers, and everybody does it a little different, are offset, which means when there's a chip breaker on one flute, there's not one behind it. So it does give you a semi-nice finish depending on what your RA is. But chip breakers, anytime you take a look at anything with chip breakers, it's usually used for a roughing application, not for finishing, maybe semi-finishing depending on what your RA is. So when I say this, here's a little tip and I want you to think about this. If there is a chip breaker on one flute and there isn't a chip breaker on the flute behind it, okay, that means every flute behind the chip breaker is taking double the chip load. Think about this. A lot of people don't think about this. This is why sometimes we get notching a little bit of wear behind every chip breaker. If you see this, if you're running a chip breaker and you start getting notching on the flute behind the chip breaker, drop your chip load because every flute that's behind the chip breaker is actually taking double the inch per tooth. If you're feeding two thou inch per tooth, inch per tooth, that's per flute. That means if I'm skipping it because I got a breaker in there, the flute behind it is actually taking four thou. It's a little mind blowing and it's something that we look at as application engineers that we have to know because you might have to drop your chip load a little bit on chip breakers. So where would I use chip breakers? I got a lot of associates that ask me all the time, is it good for helical ramping? Is it good for finishing? Like I said, is it good for roughing? Let's just talk about the tool paths that chip breakers are great for. Number one, you want to use a chip breaker, I'm going to tell you the best tool path to throw in chip breakers, and that's slotting. Slotting's really good, right? Slotting's taking 180 degrees, right? We're making a big chip. Sometimes we're going one, two times D, and you have no place for the chips to go. When you are having an issue evacuating the chips, that's the best way to look at chip breakers. Slotting's one of those. You want to take a look at chip breakers. They're gonna break that up. They're gonna evacuate a lot easier and it's gonna be easier to get them out of there. The second thing 
or application or tool path that I would use would be a roughing. HEM, you want to hog as much material out, you want to make sure those chips get evacuated in the coolant flush or the coolant flow or the air blast, make them smaller, make them smaller, get them out of there and use them that way. So a roughing application, a sodding application. Now here's just one thing I want to bring up and it's a little plug for our company, Harvey Performance. One thing we do with our chip breakers, remember when I said you have a lot more sharp corners? Well, we radius those corners. I can't speak for everybody else, but if you look at a helical solutions end mill with chip breakers, we have to be smart. We'll take the end and we'll put a nice little radius on the corner there. That way it makes it a lot stronger and they're managed a little bit better. Remember, sharp corners aren't good. We got to make it more manageable and make these tools last. So think about with helical tools, we do put a radius on the corners. Okay, so I think it's recap time. Let's talk about chip breakers. What's good about chip breakers? Well, chip breakers have pros and cons. What are some of the pros? Well, it's gonna reduce your horsepower, right? It breaks the split. You got a continuous cut. We're gonna reduce the horsepower by adding these chip breakers in there. How much? Not a huge amount, but enough to probably, if you have a machine that's a little bit weaker. What's the other thing? Oh yeah, chip breakers break up the chips, help evacuate it, cool and flush and stuff like that. We want to get the chips out. We want to manage them a little bit better. The smaller they are, the better they evacuate. The better they evacuate, hmm, what's the worst thing you can do in a, a cutting situation? Recut the chips. We don't want to do that. Make them smaller, make them manageable, get them out of the way, let the end mill work a little bit better. Now, because they're smaller chips, can it be a problem? I've heard a lot of complaints about jamming up the chip, break, uh, chip conveyor. I say breaker, I said chip breaker twice. Jamming up the chip conveyor because the chips get smaller. Be mindful of that. There are distances in between those chip breakers. You can control how big those chips are. Some are standards, but we also take a look at specials to make that and modify it. Well, folks, that's it on chip breakers. Got nothing left in the tank. Chip breakers, understand, are application-based when you need to use them. We can't cover all the applications. So if you do have any questions, just put them below. If you have anything that you want to add, maybe you use chip breakers in your shop a little bit differently, put them in the comments. Let's learn from each other and let's understand how we use these products, how we use these applications most efficiently. You can help us just as much as we can help you. Thanks again, but before I go, Three things in life we'll never get away from. Death, taxes, and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week, folks.